speaker, almost. I see him. Almost the last. Ed is a power breath coach. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Ed's going to talk a whole lot about a lot of wonderful things. You cannot not feel good when you're near Ed. He'll just keep telling you to go be great. And he's inspirational to all of us. He's now doing a 25-hour breath as medicine training for physician wellness and physician burnout. I think that's going to be exciting. His first book is going to come out, Life with Breath. And let's hear what he has to teach us about high-performance breathing. Welcome. Welcome. Mm. Good afternoon, everyone. What an amazing day. Lots of learning. Aspen Brain Lab. We're in Aspen. How could it be any better? So if you, could, if you could slide your chair back just a little bit and then come to the edge of your chair so you can have an erect spine. Thank you very much. Roll your shoulder blades up, back, and down several times and just begin to let the day go. Let go of any tension in the back of the neck, any tension around the heart, the throat, your inner voice box. Let your head tilt right to left, up or down. Just kind of get some air around the thyroid. Open up your esophagus, your trachea, the body-mind connection through the throat. And if you feel safe in this room, let your eyes close. And you'll hear a voice in your head. Not only is that your best friend, it's also your inner critic. And life is a performance. This is not a dress rehearsal. So begin to bring yourself present on the next several inhales. And notice if you inhale slower, what happens to your blood pressure and your cardiovascular system? If you begin to inhale slower, what begins to happen in the brain? The brain, we sense light. We sense we're invincible. And as you begin to breathe slower on the inhale, your diaphragm muscle, which is the primary driver of the incoming liberated energy, is pushing down into your GI tract. The diaphragm is a dual muscle. Not only does it give you amazing posture, because as we age, we don't have as much energy as we did 10 years ago. So we have to find skills to conserve energy. So as the diaphragm presses down, you'll notice optimal posture in your spine. That means you're conserving energy. As the diaphragm presses down, you're activating the 10th cranial nerve, your vagus nerve, huge in regard to rest and digest. And you're also activating your entric nervous system in your solar plexus, where 95% of the neurotransmitter serotonin is secreted, which you're going to require to fall asleep tonight. And then if you do wake up in the middle of the night, when the melatonin is complete, the serotonin will help you fall back asleep. So just begin to inhale as slowly as you can. If your head wants to move, let it move. It knows where you're holding tension from past things that haven't worked out as we perceived, but they're going to work out, I guarantee you. Begin to open your heart. And as you're breathing deeper on that inhale, sense the wonderful massage on your GI tract. Removing inflammation from your gastrointestinal organs less energy will be required to digest, eliminate, and assimilate your nutrition. And when less energy is utilized for digestion, more energy is diverted up to the brain. And we can transcend beyond our fight or flight tendencies of the amygdala and the HPA access. And we can learn to evolve with compassion, with the hippocampus, raise our awareness, and we can get out of our own way. 
And when you can get out of your own way, you give others permission to get out of their own way around you, whether it be at work or at home. Now begin to work on your exhale, your ability to let go. Now let's try to exhale through our nostrils. Don't dump the energy out through your mouth that you just cultivated on that next, on that beautiful inhale. And as you exhale slowly, remember there's one oxygen molecule in the carbon dioxide. So when you begin to exhale slowly through your nose, the brain and the body will extract that one oxygen molecule. It'll add it to the two oxygen molecules you get on the inhale, and you'll be aroused, but you'll be relaxed. And when you're aroused and relaxed, you're invincible. You can see clearly where you've been, where you are, and where you're going. After the next inhale is complete, hold the breath in for two seconds and alert your mind that you're the CEO here. You're not in the mailroom. And you have the ability to change perception, neuroplasticity, at any given moment when you find a behavior in the past is causing you to age or become arthritic in the brain or arthritic in digestion. When your exhale is complete, hold the breath out for two seconds. And stale air that hasn't been exchanged from stress in the past, whether it be in your organs, your muscles, the alveoli sacs in your lungs, will be incinerated by the brain. It's a wonderful detox. And then the next time you inhale, that space in your body will be open for the next inhale. Life is about inhale. What do you want to happen in this moment? Set it in motion on the inhale with the diaphragm moving down, the vagus nerve becoming active, the lightness in your brain, seeing the best in yourself, positive. And then exhale, let that moment go. There's nothing to hang on to. Inhale, hold to. Exhale, hold to. It's a wonderful tool for walking. It's a wonderful tool to fall asleep at night. And again, we're trying to reboot the autonomic system, reset the cardiovascular system, and put the hippocampus back to work, and turn the war department off in the brain. One more round. And let the next breath just fill your heart because you're probably doing a thousand times better than you give yourself credit for. And when you're ready to leave the meditation, just let your upper eyelid come up and the cranial nerves then will pick up your visualization. Thank you very much. So performance in breath. There's parts of our brain that all it does our entire life is it watches the length, how long am I inhaling? How long am I, am I exhaling? This is setting in motion neurotransmitters, neurochemicals, hormones. And the idea is to create safety in the brain so that the fear centers of the brain, the amygdala, and the hypothalamus can feel safe in our interpersonal neurobiology to think clearly about what's on our plate. We don't want emotion to overpower intellect in the intellectual mental process. And when we begin to lose the inhale or the exhale becomes short, shorter than the inhale, we start to burn glucose and sugar. And it's a wonderful little rush, but we drain the body. We drain our immune system and we begin to fry our nervous system. So, practice this for your entire life. Always inhale as slowly as possible and give the cerebral content of what's on the stage of your mind the best opportunity to draw in what's on the horizon of your mind and make that the new you tomorrow. Always exhale longer than your inhale unless your life is in mortal danger. If you're being chased by a bear, breathe through your mouth, resume safety, and get back to breathing through your nose. Every animal on earth breathes through its nose its entire life, unless it's been domesticated, taken out of its normal environment, unless it's being hunted or hunting. So as soon as your amygdala and hypothalamus see you mouth breathing, 
it starts the War Department. And these departments grow in size so that every time there's a stressor in your life or there's a moment of self-doubt, the brain will go here in rhythm. And it just takes us longer to figure our stuff out. So slowing down the inhale, alerting the fear centers of the brain that you're okay. Exhale longer than the inhale so you're always metabolizing fat, not sugar. Degenerative disease, inflammation, it restricts distribution of oxygen and alkalinity to keep the vibrancy of the cells of your gut. It's important, the GI tract. No one's dying of muscle cancer, okay? People are dying of organ cancer. Your diaphragm is the primary driver to keep the energy here flowing. It's a wonderful massage. Pressing down on the inhale, serotonin, dopamine. Exhale, the diaphragm comes up, the lower lobes of your lungs, parasympathetic nerve endings, oxygen, protein-rich nerve endings. So cells live longer. As our sensory perception weakens as we get aged, as we age, it takes us longer to pick up the environment. So as our sensory perception, our eyes, our nose, our ears, mouth, everything begins to age, we need to slow down the inner flashcards. And when the flashcards and the words are moving slower, you have a greater ability to say, I agree with that, I don't agree with that, or I don't know. And I don't know is a two-sided coin. I don't know, I don't want to know, somebody else do that. Or I don't know, I would prefer to know, evolve the human species. The pace of the breathing, respiration rates equal heart rates. The faster you breathe, the faster your heart will beat, the more your blood pressure will go up, dehydration will set in, digestion will stop, and it becomes very difficult for us to be us. So always look to slow the pace of the breathing down. Keep your feet on the ground. When you're inhaling, your diaphragm is moving down. In my world, that means I'm supposed to get grounded with a downward flow of energy into the strength of the grounding rods in my legs and in my feet and feel the planet. On the exhale, the energy's moving up, and I'm calming down, and I'm creating great brain maintenance. The depth of the breathing. How far can you take the oxygen, the nitrogen, the hydrogen, the carbon, into your nervous system on the inhale? If I told you you could inhale for minutes right now, you would probably say, no, I can't. But you can. But you have to want to feel more. And when we're stressed mentally, the last thing we want to do is feel those thoughts. And then we're stuck in the same cycle, the dog chasing its tail. So feel, feel your thoughts. Use the body as a way of authenticating your intention. And is that what you want to happen? Or is it not what you want to happen? Everybody's living life one breath at a time. There's nobody on the planet taking two breaths at a time. Life is about QOL, quality of life. What is the vibrancy of your brain? What is the vibrancy of your heart? Are you passionate about what you want to do? This length, depth, and pace is very important to stalling aging in every single department of the human mechanism. As we breathe, there's an autonomic function that takes place. And breath is one of the few autonomic responses that we can control if we wish. And but if we don't want to control the body and the brain, brain will breathe on its own based on what you perceive is happening in that moment. If you're thinking fear or there's danger in the brain, you naturally will, your heart, will, blood pressure will beat faster. If you're peaceful, compassionate, open, your breath will naturally be a little slower. The idea is taking less breaths per minute. Less breaths per minute. Consciously, breath regulation is going to stall aging in the brain. Because at the end of the day, there is no other health besides mental health. You can have all the six-pack abs you want and win all the races you want, but the brain runs the show. And transcending your inner critic is one of the biggest challenges that you have in your life, in your interpersonal dialogue. So it's really important to have a large reserve of relaxed autonomic energy that keeps you in a place where you're always growing. Traditionally, what we're looking at here is the right nostril on the inhale is parasympathetic, or excuse me, the right nostril on the inhale is sympathetic, and it feeds the left prefrontal cortexes, which is where we cognitively take action. The left nostril on the inhale is parasympathetic, and it feeds the right prefrontal cortex, which 
is more relaxing feeling. It's more intuitive. It takes things that haven't happened yet and it brings it over to the left and you sort through the maps that you use to create the world and the world that surrounds you. And this rotates every three hours or so into our circadian and ultradian rhythms of nature that keep us at peace internally. It's really important not to beat yourself up as this cycle goes through the day. On the inhale, you're going to feel a little aroused. That's good. And on the exhale, you're going to calm down a little bit. And, you know, calming down and rebooting, we, we heard some of this today. It's important to calm down and reboot the system as much as you can. Controlling the breath, breathing through the nose, the diaphragm, we, we have enough suction coming through the nostrils that's going to push the diaphragm vertically down. When we breathe through the mouth, the diaphragm moves, but it predominantly only moves east and west. And more muscles have to chip in to give you good posture to conserve energy, keep your heart rate down, keep your blood pressure down. So focus on this nostril breathing and get some good posture and remember, these little breath retentions like we just did there, psychologically, we know that mild stress, not the stress epidemic that we see today, mild forms of stress actually force the brain to rethink its position. So when you stop breathing for a second or two, you can pause for a moment and you can see, is this a, you know, what I want to set in motion? You notice you also get a little cardiovascular activity not a big hit of cardio, you just bring the heart rate up a little bit. And there's your heart rate variability science. Fundamentally, how much parasympathetic activity do you have in your nervous system and bloodstream? And when we have strong heart rate variability health, there's a greater space between heartbeats. And when there's a greater space between the heartbeat, the brain loves this from a neuroplastic standpoint. When we breathe fast and the heartbeats are right next to each other, the brain will usually revert back to an old subconscious or unconscious behavior that we were using when we were children to either attack, defend, or escape any type of responsibility. Alternate nostril breathing. You want to try it? Sit up tall. Bring your right hand up to your face and take your thumb and close off the right nostril. Now slowly inhale up the left nasal channel and there's a flow of energy moving into the right hemisphere of the brain. Take one of your fingers, close off the left nostril, release the thumb, and exhale the waist slowly out the right. And then slowly inhale up the right. Notice there'll be a spike in the thinking. Close off the right, release the finger, exhale left. Sit up tall. Come on. Inhale left. Close off the left, release the thumb. Exhale slowly out the right. Inhale right. Close off, release, exhale, left. Now inhale, left, hold the breath in for two seconds. Go into that space fully and be you. Close off the left, release the thumb, exhale, right, and hold the breath out for a moment. Stop the mind right there. Inhale, right. Hold the breath in for two seconds. Stop the mind. Authenticate the voice and picture in your head. Close off the right, release the finger, exhale, left. Bring the right hand down. Now inhale, stand up. Hold the breath in and squeeze your core. Exhale, sit back down slowly with control. Inhale, slowly come up. Hold the breath in, squeeze your core. Feel your emotional intelligence. Exhale, sit back down. One more. Inhale, up. Diaphragm down, body coming up, hold. Draw the core, feel your emotional center. Exhale, calm down, sit back down. Close your eyes, let your head move around this room, release any tension around your voice box, any tension around your cervical spine, and just be fully present for yourself. And when you're ready, open your eyes. This is basically a new science, this respiration science. And a lot of the science that, that's been coming up around breath studies, it's all on my website. 
because I want to keep you guys up to date with this new science, because it's extremely powerful in cutting the gap between your intention, what you want to happen, and manifesting it. And when you begin to work with breath, that gap closes in time, and you get what you want faster. So pay attention to what you want. Diaphragm muscle. We're talking about stabilizing the low back and increasing your ability to eliminate what doesn't work for you in your life, whether it's physical or emotional, but getting it out through your tissue. Your lower body mechanics. When you're talking about core, there is no deeper muscle in the body than the diaphragm in regard to connecting your lower body mechanics. So your brain sees that in regard to what you're doing up here. When we lose our inspiratory muscles, our muscles of inhale, fatigue begins to set in. And when fatigue sets in, we revert back to the way we were years ago. And that's simply not good enough anymore. You've got to be on it today so that tomorrow's better than today. And when you can learn one new thing every day, you're way ahead of the pack. And when you learn one new thing every day, it's okay to forget one thing that no longer serves you too. Lighten that carriage. Life is an endurance event. This isn't a speed event. Slow down. Life has little inter intervals of speed, but predominantly it's endurance event and your fuel is fat. If you want to burn fat as a fuel, you have to take less than 12 breaths a minute. One of the ways you can do that, there's a tradition or a technique in the yoga tradition called the ocean sounding breath. Bring one of your hands up to your face and pretend it's a mirror and just fog it. Close your eyes and use the left side of your brain and try to identify where that tone is coming from. You'll find it above the trachea. It's a piece of cartilage called your glottis or epiglottis. Have you identified it? Bring your hand down, close your eyes, contract that area that you just heard in your mind's ear, and you'll hear a sound form in your throat. And notice now the length of your breath has dramatically grown. The pace of your breath has dramatically slowed down. You're humidifying this dry air before it comes into your body. Remember when we exhale, the exhale is almost 100% humidity. Let's try to get that on the inhale so that steam, you ever been in the steam shower, your pores open, it goes deeper into your cells. And where oxygen touches, cancer can't set in. There's a lot of science about the vagus nerve and one of the fastest ways to activate this nerve is optimal breathing. We need to have a lot of serotonin in the body during the day so that it's easy for us to fall asleep at night because the serotonin is a prerequisite for the melatonin, but the body stops secreting the melatonin at two o'clock. And everybody wakes up and they get the monkey mind going and oh God, tomorrow I'm gonna be exhausted. So if you have a lower heart rate during the day and there's not as much cortisol and adrenaline in your body, less acidity in your day, you're gonna have more serotonin less free radicals in your system, so that your brain can do the maintenance work that it needs at night to file things, so that when you get up the next day, you're more aware than you were on Friday. Heart rate variability, lowers heart rate and blood pressure, all, it's all about stalling aging. We all have a ton to live for. And wherever we can identify physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, choices that we've been making that are aging us, we have to turn back to that and try to make these corrections with great skill. <clears throat> Learning how to use the whole brain in today's world. You know, we have the left brain, which is very Western, even though it's used in the East, and we have the Eastern brain, which is very, you know, relaxed and intuitive, and things move slower, and there's more of a feel to, to nature, but we need to use both cortexes. The breathing is a huge role in regard to you identifying which nostril is more open, where are you getting your information from the brain at that point, so it allows you to have a less stress-free day. If you're trying to work with numbers and your left nostril is more open than your right, it's gonna take you a split second longer to identify the math. And most of the time, when we can't get the answer we want right away, we panic. Our heart rate goes up. 
we start to get angry. If you're trying to create a new paradigm for yourself, and your right nostril is more open than your left, it's going to be very hard to do that because your left prefrontal cortex is always working on rhythm and rotation, consciously, subconsciously. Everything that hasn't happened in your life is coming from the right cortex. It's coming down across the center of your stage and will be integrated into the left, and you'll apply thoughts and words to manifest that. When you can relax, look into that right prefrontal cortex. There's no words or numbers there. There's just opportunity. And how much of that opportunity can you move into to make this moment the best moment of your life? and then the next moment of your life. Until all there is, is there's a consciousness that everything in my life is happening for my benefit. I have a theory that when there's issue in our life or there is self-doubt or we're in conflict with another person, the old way of dealing with this is the breath would get short, we'd start to hyperventilate, the HPA access would kick on and it would either be a fight or flight response. And sometimes the cap was just off the toothpaste. You know, it really wasn't worth putting all that emotion into being right or attacking someone or whatever. Through this breathing and healing our immune system and keeping the brain constantly evolving your skill sets and your desires, when there's conflict in our life, why can't we have the hypothalamus signal the penal gland for serotonin? So there's a moment of compassion not only for you, but the person you're with and everybody on the planet, that if you're trying to get things done in your life, there's going to be resistance. If you're a result-oriented person, the universe doesn't reveal its secrets to you very, very easily. You're going to have to surrender some things along the way. So having the serotonin in the pineal gland and maybe even transcending the, getting into this hypothalamus, into the hippocampus. So I'm really interested in the science that's taking place on that. There's a lot of talk about flow, and flow initially was used for athletes. How could we get into flow? And one of the things I do through breath control is how do we create the right atmosphere, the right atmospheric conditions, like we have for a rainbow? We have certain atmospheric conditions. Well, the rainbow for the human brain is flow. And this is something I'm doing a lot with corporate professionals today so we can evolve where you've been and increase your revenue while at the same time keeping stress level and medical bills down. So for me, it all begins with the diaphragm moving down, we're getting the serotonin, and we're getting dopamine from the gut. So you got two of the five already out of the way. Now, these endorphins and opiates that come from the brain, you're going to have to deal with surrender. You're going to have to let go of things that no longer serve you. And this is where these endorphins and opiates are going to help you hang in there with the experience. You're going to have your anatomine, which is a cross-lateral molecule, which allows you to get information from both cortexes, and it thickens the corp it really enlivens the corpus callosum, which is a series of matted nerves, which basically give you two television sets or two brains in one skull. And as the corpus callosum of tricity becomes stronger, and the anatomine allows you to get information from both sides of your brain, you're using your whole brain. And when you're using your whole brain, chances are you're going to be a lot more successful than someone across from you who's using half their brain. And we all know what Nori Epinephrine does. So the benefits of breath. You're going to live longer. You're going to smile more. You're going to love more. You're going to have better sex. Everything is going to get better when you have a relationship with breath. Inflammation reduction is huge in regard to stalling degenerative disease and keeping everything alkaline. The more alkaline your blood is to some degree, the easier it is for your heart to pump a thin transparent fluid than a thicker acidic fluid with toxins and bacteria and viruses attached to it. The breath has been used for thousands of years to gateways to deeper states of consciousness. You want to call it meditation, concentration, relaxation, self-regulation, call it what you want. But you're going to have to turn off the inner critic to get behind that inner critic and love what you hate about it. And then when you love what you hate about it, there's no one to be at war with. We want to blend these two prefrontal cortexes. When we can turn off time in the left prefrontal cortex, it's an amazing tool in regard to you achieving what you want. Neuroplasticity is available to us all the time. Transformation is available to us all the time. And when you're using the breath and you're athletic, it's great in regard to minimizing the joint injuries, the low back industry, 
the destruction of the skeletal muscle and tissue because you always want to get the greatest workout as possible with the lowest heart rate as possible. So the lower heart rate you have, the more power, sustainable power you have to work with your brain past the places where we used to stub our toe in the past. So the lower the heart rate, the more power you have for the brain. The more power you have for the brain, the greater ability you're going to have to control your neuromuscular skeletal system. There's a lot of research on my website. I've got a great book coming out. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming out. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.